Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Winter Baseball Classic. We have made it to the Final Four. And we have seeds one, two, three, and five getting that far. Let's take a look at the bracket quick. Here we are with um, five plays one, three plays two, in best of seven series, and then the championship is another best of seven. And we're in the Savannah, Rhode Island series. The home team won the first three games. The first two in Rhode Island, the third in Savannah, but in game four, Rhode Island won in Savannah. So they hold a three to one lead. This Rhode Island team, the number one seed is 12 and two in this tournament, which is pretty remarkable for any team to dominate when all teams are have plenty of weaknesses. But in any event, they're up three games to one. They need to win one more game to make it to the finals, folks. Rhode Island, that's right. The Rhode Island Ridgebacks against the Savannah Spanish Moths, which you can find plenty of hanging from the trees in Forsyth Park and all those fountains down there in Savannah and so forth. Hilton Head, all that wonderfulness. Anyway, today's pitchers for Rhode Island, their ace, Bob Miller, and for Savannah, it is Joel Horland. And yes, this is a scouting venture looking for fringe talent to make it into the summer league. And Joel Horland, uh, he's 4-2 and two in the tournament thus far, doing okay, showing that he has the medal to pitch in the summer league. But he uh, needs to Put one on today. He needs to get a win to keep his uh, Winter Baseball Classic team going. Uh, Bob Miller is already in the Summer League as a reliever for the San Diego Padres. So he, his uh, status is safe with a different card. When I say, of course, in the Summer League, I mean uh, a different year. These are all 1969 cards. If you're in the Summer League, you're in it with your 70 or your 71 card. Anyway, let's get things started. Rhode Island leads off. Tommy Harper leads it off 2-5 as a grounder to short. Dick McAuliffe, 412, flies to right. Bobby Tolan, 54, flies to the left. Steve Hubley, 49's a walk. Sutherland will hit and run, try and get things going. Moves the runner up. Don Buford flies to the left. Runner at second, two outs for Joe Foy. Single one of 14 is the single. You got runners on the corners. We could use a big hit here. Fuentes, comma, Tito, but he rolls a second base. Top of two. Jim Fregosi pops the first. Yastrzemski, 68, is a single for the Beast Dealer. Willie Smith, 210, is a single to right field. You guys have some wheels. Does he want to go coast to coast off the Hubley arm? Hubley's got a minus one arm now. First and second for freehand. 1-6, single left. Does Jazz want to score from second on a single against the Don Buford zero arm? Yeah, he's going to try it. 1-14, to 14, thrown out on a 16. Jazz cannot quite, yeah. Need to turn, uh, switch the Jets on there. Go into the Jado Rockets there, Jazz, when you're rounding third next time. Uh, Bully Smith doesn't go to third on the play either. So you have first and second with two outs. Bob Berta, 45, flies the center. And if you're wondering why we're running on the bases, well, it's because Bob Berta hit 230 in the eight spot. And Jim Lytle hit 181 in the nine spot. Yet this team is 12 and two. Go figure. Larry Isaac walks. Jim Spencer, 1-5, single left field. Heisel, he will not try, he will not challenge the Yaz arm and left. First and second for John Kennedy, 54 off the Miller card, Homer one to three doubles, a double to center field, and Savannah has a one off in the lead. Second and third for Mike Ryan, single one to 14, lines out on a 17. With one out, they'll bring it up, that's when I like to do it, for Hubley. First B, cut down on the plate. Runs in the corners, two outs for Gary Sutherland, walks, loaded, that guy and those two guys are on for Buford. A big hit here is what Savannah needs to keep this series going. Let's take a look at Don Buford's card. 1-9, triple 1-9, double is a double to center field. 
And um, Buford is in the Summer League with his 1971 card, which is pretty much just like this one, really. 290 with a 100 walks or so, great on base. Except the 71 card, he's a better base dealer. Here he's a C. So does Gary Sutherland try and score from first on a double? He's a 12 runner, 13, 14. No. It's a two run double. That guy, that guy scored. Second and third, two outs for Foy. 110, center. Three nothing Savannah. Jim Lytle, 38. K's. Tommy Harper, 55, second. McAuliffe, 38, 1 of 14, lines out on a 17. All right, Fuentes, 68, lines third. Jim Spencer, 43, first X. This is Berta, it's a 3 8 at first. He gives up a cheap single. Spencer, 46, another single to right field. Spencer, uh, Heisel will hold. And it'll be first and second for John Kennedy. 1-5. Third A. Tough break there. Okay, we got a 3 nothing game in the fourth. Bobby Tolan, 35. Single 108. Single. Fregosi, 37's a K. Yastrzemski, 411. Right X. Hovely's a 3-E-4. And he makes the grab. And with two outs. Willie Smith, 45. Sky's a center. Mike Ryan, 47, single one of 14, base hit. Hubley, 47, single one of 10, line out. Sutherland, 4-4, four, four, pops the first, then with two outs. Don Buford, 2-7, grounds the third. Well, they got three runs, so they've put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in on base, though. Blown some opportunities. Three nothing lead in the fifth for Savannah. Bill Freehand, 57's a K. Berta, 67, lines out. Jim Lytle, flies right. Bottom of the fifth, Joe Foy, 32, short. Fuente, 69, center. Larry Heisel, 1-8, is a K. Five in the books, still three zip. Joel Horlin, showing that medal we talked about. He looks like he is priming himself uh, for a call in the draft for the summer league. He's going to probably make it. Tommy Harper, 4-11. Flies it in the left. Buford's a 2-E-5 in left field. He makes the grab. McCall left 66. Flies the right. Toll of the Bells, 47. Okay, six shutout innings against a 12-2 team for Joel Horland. That'll get you some glowing reports from the scouts. A draft riser, folks. <laughs> Bottom of the sixth of a 3 nothing game. Bob Miller's going to trot out there at least one more frame. He's a starter seven. Jim Spencer rolls it to short. Fregosi's a 2E21, and he boots the ball. Rhode Island is not sharp at all today, folks. Kennedy, 34. That's a double play. 6-4-3. Mike Ryan flies left. There is a little bit of defense you can bring in to help out um, Horlin to the next three frames. Ray Euler will play shortstop for Foy. Fuente goes to DH. And Euler's 2 27 at short. So all the defense is in with nine outs to go and a 3 0 shutout. Here, here's Fregosi. 37's a K. Yastrzemski, 33, pop out. Willie Smith, 65, rolls to second base. Stretch time in Savannah. We are listening to Game Theory, Lolita Nation. Nice little double LP that came out in 1987. Band out of Northern California. Pretty good. Later became, um, oh, I forgot. Shoot. Well, that wasn't smart, was it? It turned into another band, and I can't remember their name. You guys, can, if you want to look that up for me and put it in the comments section, it'd be greatly appreciated. Anyway... Um, bottom of the seventh, Bob Miller's going to go out there for one more inning. He hasn't pitched that bad. Steve Hubley. 
55. One to six doubles a double. Sutherland one four pops third. Buford one twelve K. And with two outs, Euler one seven is a K. All right, eighth inning. Joel Horland stretching it out three nothing. Uh, John Hiller, Fred Gladding warming. This has been a nifty four hitter with the aid of some base running miscues. William Freehand, 111, short. Berta, 16, first. Jim Lytle, 611, rolls it to first. This is Spencer, a 2E15. Eight shutout innings. Joel Horland, Joel Big Game Horland. <laughs> uh, let's see, Bob Miller will take the day off. He gave you seven strong innings. Uh, Frank Lindsay pitched the eighth inning here. Needs to get some work in. There's Frank. Joe Foy, or excuse me, um, Tito Fuentes, 69 is a single. Heisel, 47, single one to eight, lines out. Jim Spencer, 68, single dot dot. They're going to bring it up, one out for Kennedy. 2 4, let's look at John Kennedy's card. Homer, one to six double. That's a double to center field. John Kennedy, already in the summer league. Was on the Colorado Rockies. Now he's on the Boston Red Sox. Ultimately, he pushes Petroselli from shortstop to third, and he'll take over at short is how that session will be, at least in the short term. Second, third, one out. Mike Ryan, they're going to bring an infield up at a 4 nothing game. Center be question mark. Spencer will not challenge the arm. And with two outs and a 4 nothing game, Hovley, 66, short X. This is for Ghost. You get 2E21, having a rough day in the field. You get a hit earlier, or an error earlier. I can't remember. 4 nothing. Joel Horland in the ninth, trying to get a C, G, S, O, and perhaps a ticket to the Summer League. Dance, the big dance. Tommy Harper, 3-11, flies to right. Dick McAuliffe, 3-8, single one to 14, is a base hit. Tolan, 2-2, third B. He runs a second with two outs, and for Ghost, 63. Bouncer to short, this is Euler. The 2, E27, and the game's over, and Joel Horland. Break it up for Joe or Joel, depending on uh, your baseball reference or Stratomatic, as they have differing uh, spellings there. We have a 4 nothing shutout, and Horland, beautiful game, five hitter, five strikeouts, no walks. Complete game. Frank Lindsay gave up three hits and a run in the eighth. Bob Miller, kind of a dud, gave up eight hits and three runs, all early. And often, walk three, strike out two. There's your box, 1-0-9, 0 8 Home team was won four out of the five games. It was that game four road win for Rhode Island that is the difference of the series. 4-11-05, there it is, 0 5 3, 3. All right, let's take a look at the composite box. We cannot crown a finalist uh, for the World Baseball Classic Championship quite yet. I'll have to play one or two more games and um, give you the elimination video of the runner-up after we do this composite box. Savannah is a tough team. I thought they were, of all the non-seeded teams, that Savannah had the best chance of advancing, and they're giving Rhode Island everything they got. Have the most wins in the tournament, too, by the way. So Sp Savannah is 13 and seven, the Spanish Moss. They are hitting 281 with a 313 ERA. And Joel Horland is five and two, giving up 14 runs and 54 innings. And if you're wondering, yes, that is a 233 ERA. That sounds like that might translate. They also have Bob Moose on this team. He'll get into the league, I'm pretty sure. They also have Jim Merritt on this team, who's really been fortunate. He's 4-0. He's given up 11 runs and 33 innings, so he's pitched effectively, though his card's not particularly good. Let's move on to Rhode Island, though. Rhode Island is now 12-3. And, and two of the three losses are at the hands of Savannah in these first five games. But they're hitting 282. With a 380 ERA, um, I guess Fergosi is still the team. Yeah, he's 22 for 56 to this point. 
hitting a cool 393. Right now, Jim Fragosi is probably your MVP of the tournament until someone else eclipses him. And as far as the year to date, yeah, we got 107 games played. <coughs> we are hitting 251 with a 380 ERA. 251 with a 380 ERA through 107 games. And uh, yeah, I got a couple more games to play in this series and we'll get back to you with an elimination video for one of these two teams. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you soon. Welcome back baseball fans. So who got eliminated? Savannah was down 3-1 and they won game five uh, to make the game three games to two. We went back to Rhode Island for a possible Game 6 and Game 7. One of the teams has been eliminated, and that team is... Yup! Sorry, Rhode Island. The number one seed choked the series away, dropping the final three games. It's time to say farewell to Rhode Island. Uh, losers of... They were up three games to one. They were 12-2 and two at one point, then they dropped three in a row. Went into a hitting slump, pitching slump. That's all it takes. And they're toast. So let's take a look at these Rhode Island guys and see what their future is for the Summer League. Baldshin, he acted as the closer for the team, and I don't think there's any continuation of his season. Unfortunately, he has a 4.79 ERA. Uh, I think it's time to call it a career. So he can get righties out okay, but he's just terrible against lefties. Heedland's already in the Summer League. He's got nothing to worry about. Jim Harden, one of the many, many guys connected to the Orioles during this era, as their pitching staff is now all over baseball. But the homers against righties are concerning. Um, his ERA is not really that bad. His ERA looks better than his... Um, yeah, he's got a 359 ERA, 138 innings. Was effective for that 69 World Series team for the Orioles, but... You know, he might get in the league probably for an expansion team, but it, I don't, I'm not really happy with that card. Mudcat Grant is already in the league. Don't have to worry about him. Bob Miller, already in the league. Don't have to worry about him. Kilkenny did okay. Starter 7, lefty starter 7. Like the fly ball there, the out there. The double one there. That's nice. The single one there. Look at all the outs you can get on this guy's card. I think this guy gets into the league... The Florida Marlins have the rights to this guy, so I, I think they, um, uh, as an expansion team, they'll be glad to have a, a starter seven in their rotation. Frank Lindsay, he's got some better cards in future years. I'm not crazy about this one, probably not. 365 and 14 and 9, that sounds good, but it's a lot of hits against righties. I think he's got better years ahead. Blazing game, I think he has better years ahead too, and he might even be in the league already, I can't recall. But definitely not with this card. 537 ERA. Bill Freehand is in the league with the Tigers. Got in their league last year, replacing Lance Parrish. Chris Canizera, believe it or not, this dude was the 1969 San Diego Padres representative in the All-Star game, because every team had to have a representative. He was terrible, of course, hitting 220. He actually was okay in 1970, though. He hit like 270. So the 1970 Canizero card may very well get into the league. Ed Charles can only play third base and not very well, and he can't hit very well. I doubt it for this guy. 207. A couple more guys here. Bat left handed. Now, Willie Smith. He was the top OPS guy for unprotected players. Does it all on one side of the card. I think he gets into the league because that's a lot of OPS. A lot of homers and walks. So, he can give you a little bit of first base too. Kind of like a Willie... Looks like a Willie Mays Akins kind of player here. But I kind of see him... Uh, yeah, I think he can be in a platoon at DH of first base for somebody. Jim Lytle's already in the league with better hitting. Berta is in the league as a pinch hitter for the Cardinals, or actually he's a DH for the Cardinals. Harper is a better year in 1970, and he's using that card from Milwaukee. McAuliffe uh, is ready to get into the league in, in various years. I particularly like this year. 
he hits 262. Now, his 70 card, he walks 110 times, but he hits 242. And he's got the 2-2 card in that one. I like this card better. I think th uh, this McAuliffe card gets in. Tolan's already in the league for the Big Red Machine. Fergosi's in the league as he was on the Angels, but got in that... Uh, ultimately got put in a... Not, not the historic... Nolan Ryan trade. I actually put him in a historic Don Sutton trade. Uh, Sutton sent him from Milwaukee to the Angels through to the Dodgers, and Milwaukee ends up with this guy playing shortstop, replacing Robin Yale. It's kind of a neat, cool way of doing that. You'd have to have seen the Summer League to know uh, those, that transaction. Yaz, his 70 cards are already in the league. This is a great card, don't get me wrong. 40 home runs. 101 walks, but his 1970 card, it's in the league, it's 329. That's a no-brainer. Now, Johnny Jeter, this is a nameless card. I don't use nameless cards in my summer league. Hits 310 with this one. However, Jeter has a one of those uh, fringe pinch-hitting cards where it hits 320. And that card will probably get into the league for the Padres, we believe. Johnny Jeter. And that'll do it for Rhode Island. Disappointing end to... A fairy tale season. Wait till next year in the Winter Baseball Classic. Congratulations to the Savannah team. They are in the finals. Savannah will play the winner of Athens versus Missoula. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you next time.